Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Um, oh boy. Remember when I said in my last video that because I was done with classes and I was just doing my internship that I might have more time for this? <laughs> oh, that was funny. One thing that I did forget to mention and it was kind of not thinking about when I said that is that I had my comprehensive exams to study for, like the required to graduate exams that are cumulative of your entire grad school experience. Yeah, I had to take those, took those a couple of weeks ago, by which I mean I finished them last week. Yeah, like a week ago. Um, yeah, so I had comprehensive exams to study for. Also then my partner and I started looking for a house to buy. Um, we found one, we made an offer. Uh, it, we are now in contract. Um, we are hoping to close on a house in like less than a week. So there was that happening. There was comprehensive exams. There was just a full-time internship. Um, there was also the fact that we got engaged. Uh, she proposed to me. This is not the ring. This is a placeholder ring. Um, I will put a picture of the actual ring that she proposed with. It is at the jewelry shop getting resized because it was a little too small. It was very, very sweet. So yes, she is now my fiance, not just my girlfriend. We have absolutely not begun wedding planning even remotely because that is going to wait until after graduation, after we buy a house, after we move, after I get a new job. All of that shit has to happen first before we can even start thinking about wedding planning. But anyway, point being, lots of shit's been happening. Um, some of it school related, some of it life related. And I have today a book haul because... The last time I did a book haul, it was a birthday and Christmas book haul. So that was like December and January. We are now July. I don't buy books a ton, but there were a few things that happened. One of which was that for our fourth year anniversary, which was in April, um, we took a week long road trip because it happened, our anniversary happened to coincide with my spring break. We took a week long road trip and part of that involved going to Portland and going to Powell's, Powell's Books in Portland. If you are not familiar with Powell's and you're a book lover, I don't know how you're not familiar with Powell's. Powell's is a wonderful, magical fairyland of books. Uh, it is called a city of books. It is a Portland specific bookstore chain and the main flagship store is an entire city block and about four or five stories tall. So it is wonderful and amazing. And I went a little hog wild. I also, bought a few things because um when I had a I had a week long break in uh like June um and I went down to San Diego and I went and visited the bookstore that I used to work at so I also have some books there and then finally what happened is that we um because we're moving we uh, decided to bring a whole bunch of books and, you know, DVDs and video games and stuff to Half Price Books. And you can't walk into Half Price Books without walking out with some things. So, you know, basically over the course of the last six, seven months, I've accumulated some shit. So I'm going to kind of go chronologically, I think, um, starting with a couple books that I could have mentioned in my last haul. I think I had these already, but I just forgot about them. Um, I got Son of a Trickster and Trickster Drift by Eden Robinson. Um, I have already read Son of a Trickster, but I read it on audiobook quite a while ago. And they did an extremely frustrating thing, which is that they changed the audiobook narrator in between books one and book two. So book two had a completely different narrator who was completely different and therefore in my brain completely wrong. And then they also did a thing where they didn't even just change it for book two. They like took away the audiobook for book one and re-released it with that new narrator who's horribly wrong. So I can't listen to it on audiobook anymore. And you can't buy these in physical copy in the US. These are only available in Canada. So I had to have my Canadian friend <laughs> buy these and ship them to me. And now of course, book three of the trilogy is out and I don't have it. So I might need to contact my Canadian friend again. 
But anyway, this is an indigenous um, author writing uh, urban fantasy about a kid named Jared. He is basically, he finds out that he is the son of a trickster god, like a native trickster god. And he's kind of a fucked up teen. He's like the local pot cookie dealer for his high school. He has shitty attendance. His mom is has a sort of rotating door of shitty boyfriends. Um, and then he doesn't, he doesn't know that he has this magical heritage. And so, um, but it's in the first book, which is the only one that I've read, there's not a whole lot of magic in it. It just kind of, it's like creeping in through the sides. And a lot of the times he's not actually totally sure if what's happening to him is real or if it's like a drug induced hallucination cause he's high a lot. So, um, yeah, I really liked this book. The second book is a little bit longer. So I'm very curious about how the series continues. And I do really want to get book three to finish them. So, all right. Um, now I'm going to get the Powell stuff out. As you can tell, there's quite a lot here. So the one of the first books that I got is one that actually me and Ashlyn were both interested in, and she is now reading. Um, it is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. This one I know is gay and sci-fi. That's kind of it. That's kind of all I knew, was that people that I trusted really liked this book. And it's gay and sci-fi, like sapphic and sci-fi. But looking at the back, there's like a murder mystery aspect to it, that there's this woman who's sent to be like a new ambassador or yes, ambassador. But then the previous ambassador has died and it seems like he was murdered, but no one's talking about it. So there's like a murder mystery aspect to it. Seems very cool. Um, yeah, like I said, my fiance is reading it. She's about this far through. She doesn't really read a lot of speculative fiction. She mostly reads nonfiction or lesbian romance. So the, basically she's reading that one because it's gay, but she's really enjoying it, which is good. So apparently it's fairly accessible to people that don't read a lot of sci-fi fantasy. Um, so good to know. Another one, I think this one technically I actually didn't get at Pals. I think this one we got at our like local indie bookstore. But anyway, it was Son of the Storm by Sugi Davies Okungboa. I might have said that wrong. Okungboa is the best I got. The main character of this one is a scholar who's really interested in forbidden magics. And then he like finds someone that has magic that shouldn't exist or maybe was supposed to have gone extinct. Not totally clear on the details. Um, this was another one that I've just seen people rave about. And I really love um, non-Western fantasy. So when people start raving about it, I'm gonna check it out. I also was interested in this author because he has that middle grade series that's like David some, no, it's like um, God Hunter is in the title. I can't remember, but it's like a middle grade series and I'm not super into middle grade. So figured I'd check out his adult novel. All right, so in the vein of it's speculative fiction and gay, I also bought Prior of the Orange Tree. Now, Prior in the Orange Tree and I have a bit of a history in that I have tried to read it a couple times. I tried it on audiobook and I was getting too confused um, because there were too many different characters, there were too many different settings, and um, there's like a, I believe there's a map in here. Yeah, there's a map and that you just, you know, don't have access to when it's on audiobook. And so I was just kind of getting a little bit too confused. And then I started reading it in physical copy from the library and that did work better, but this is such a freaking honker of a book that I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this before I need to return it. So the only way that I'm actually going to get through this is if I own it. So yeah, now I own it. Um, it involves, what I remember is that there's kind of two different kingdoms or empires and they take place in kind of separate parts of the world and some of the like one of them kind of worships dragons and another one like demonizes them and I think it's kind of the different ideas between like the difference between western dragons and eastern dragons like western dragons are generally seen as very antagonistic and eastern dragons are seen as much more like wise protectors of nature that kind of thing so um but also it's gay so it is a uh, thick boy. I am intimidated, but I do really want to try it. All right, next on here is The Angel of the Crows by Catherine Addison. I really, really liked the other book by Catherine Addison that I've read, um, which was The Goblin Emperor. 
there we go, which is a book that I borrowed from a friend, might need to get my own copy because I might want to reread it soon. But anyway, so this takes place in like an alternate version of London in like Jack the Ripper time, but there's also angels and they can fall to earth and, you know, create like massive upheavals. So in this world, there's like an angel that's watching over London, but then Jack the Ripper is also stalking. I don't really know a whole lot about it, but I have read books by this author before and I've really enjoyed them. So Catherine Addison is a pen name for Sarah Monet. And I have read um, Sarah Monet's main series, which was Melusine. That series is fucked up and I don't think I'm going to be reading it anytime soon. In fact, I think I sold it when I brought it to Half Price Books, but I've really liked her more recent stuff. So I'm really looking forward to this. All right, next on the Powell's Hall is A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger. This is an indigenous story. Um, I believe it's a coming of age story. It looks like it is kind of urban fantasy in that it's like America, but an America that's been influenced by gods and creatures from myth. And then there's also just these gorgeous illustrations in it. Um, like at the beginnings of chapters, there's these, let me get it to focus. I'm trying to remember who it was on booktube that recommended this, that, um, that like got this on my radar. And it was, I don't have a degree in reading, I think. She's been talking about this one for a bit. And it's just, it's gorgeous. And um, yeah, I really want to check it out. Next one here is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. I know basically nothing about the plot of this. I think it's gay. And again, that's kind of all I need to know is gay and fantasy. Looking at the back, there are, it looks like two main characters. There's like a soldier and then a noble person. And there's a whole situation about empire and rebellion and the soldier who I think belongs to the peoples that are rebelling is kind of conscripted to stop the rebellion. That's just sort of what I'm gathering from the back. But uh, yeah, my good friend Ro, who um, is a great source of book recommendations for me, recommended this, told like added me on Twitter and told me that I needed to get this. And that's all I need to know. So there we go. Next on here is The Conductors by Nicole Glover. This is like an alternate history of people who use like magic in the stars to like help people on the Underground Railroad. Or they did because now the war is over. Um, and now there's this like married couple who were helping slaves escape. And now they're using their powers to like solve mysteries, I think. Yes. Strange death or magical curses are causing trouble. These two are the ones that can solve the case. So there's a historical aspect to it. There's magic, there's a murder mystery. It sounds like a great time. And I believe this one was on sale, which is partly why I grabbed it. Cause I don't, I don't think I've seen a lot of people talk about this book, but I thought it would be worth a shot. It seems cool. It seems interesting. All right, so last for the Powell's Hall was The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Addison. I have had this book recommended to me a few different times. I, however, have not been able to get it off of my radar ever since I started following, um, shoot, what's her name? Her name is Sam. I can't remember her channel name, um, but she's like obsessed with this trilogy. And she says that it's like a perfect trilogy, that it ends perfectly, that like the whole arc is super satisfying. It has some elements of like gods of death, which is one of a trope that I really like. And it's also like inspired by Russian folklore. Oh, I said Catherine Addison. I meant Catherine Arden. Catherine Addison is uh, Angel of the Angel of the Crows. Yes. So Catherine Arden. Anyway, so yeah, Russian inspired, God of death. People keep raving about it. I figured I'd go ahead and check it out, which does lead me to the half price books because we brought in like nine bags of books and I walked out with two individual books. Um, and one of which was The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden, book two of the Winter Night Trilogy. Um, no, I have not started book one, but I figured... All right. Um, but, you know, I figured that they came so highly recommended that I could, um, you know, it was at a used bookstore, so it was cheap. I figured I could risk it. So speaking of books that I got at Half Price Books, the other individual book that I walked away with was Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, um, because I read Strange the Dreamer a while ago, and I have been wanting to get to Muse of Nightmares. I think I read strange the dreamer like right before this came out in between like finishing book one and the time that book two came out i think i just like lost a bit of momentum um but anyway i 
found that that book was super weird. <coughs> I'm getting over a cold. I don't have COVID. That was another thing that happened. I got my exam results on Monday from my comprehensive exams and I passed everything, which is excellent. But the fact that I passed everything and therefore I knew that I didn't have to do rewrites, which would be due at the end of the month, meant that I was actually like fucking done, meant that my body immediately collapsed and I got sick. Am I doing better? Yes. Is it still really annoying? Yes. Um, I've also been working in person with children. I was like working with children for like three weeks and then I had that big fucking weekend of getting engaged and then on Monday I found out that I passed my exams and then on Tuesday I woke up sick. I was out for like three days. I had not gotten sick in a long time and I'd forgotten how much I fucking hate it. Is it the end of the world? No. Am I still annoyed about it? Yes. Anyway, Muse of Nightmares, sequel to Strange the Dreamer. I love books about like the rise and fall of divinity and and like the aftermaths of the fall of divinity i i find all that stuff really interesting that's why i really like the hundred thousand kingdoms by nk jemison it's why i like the city of stairs books by robert jackson bennett and it's why i'm interested in this series so i will be getting to this at some point probably next year i think next year because this year is my finish series that i've already started that i like already owned everything but I had like started it before and never finished it. That's like my goal this year. My goal, I think next year is going to be reading a bunch of the like standalones um, or like starting new series that I haven't done. And then also just like the series that I have been meaning to finish that um, I maybe didn't own the last book or the last book hadn't didn't come out yet or something like that. Um, that's going to be my goal. So I think this is going to be on my finish, um, like my finishing or continuing series goal for next year. I don't think I'm going to get to it immediately, but I am very excited to read this. Okay, so that was Powell's and Half Rice books. The only thing that's left is what's in here, which is what I got when I was down in San Diego. So a couple of these I didn't actually buy because my friend Ro that I mentioned, who is a great source of book recommendations, lives in San Diego. And I went and visited her and we had lunch and then she gave me a couple books that she had like duplicates of that she thought I might like. So the first is um, Hannah Witten for The Wolf. And this one, it, I don't, <laughs> because it's an arc, it doesn't have a synopsis. All, the, all that it says on the back is the first daughter is for the throne. The second daughter is for the wolf. Obviously, given the cover, it's some kind of Red Riding Hood inspired story, but that is honestly all I know about it. There's a like letter on the inside that says, uh, the time is at hand. The second daughter enters her 20th year and thus our tithe to the wolf in the Wilderwood comes true. Oh, may the wolf, may the wolf find our tithe acceptable. May our kings return. So it seems like maybe they're trying to restore their kingdom or... I don't know. Anyway, she told me I should read it, so I'm gonna. Um, and then the last one is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I did read another Tasha Suri book. I read Empire of Sand a few years ago, um, and I did really enjoy it, so I have been wanting to check this one out. Um, this one also, I have heard, is a lot more queer than the Empire of Sand books are. Do I know anything about it other than it is, as Ro described, full Desi queer? No, I do not. Is that all I need to know? Yes, it is. Okay, so the next book that I got, this is one I actually purchased, um, is not for me. It is for my soon-to-be niece-in-law. Um, so it's my fiance's niece. She's about three and a half, four. Um, it's H.P. Lovecraft's The Call of Cthulhu for beginning readers. So it's like Dr. Seuss style Call of Cthulhu. This might be a little bit beyond her. There's a lot of death in it. You know, there's a lot of murder and being consumed by eldritch horrors. But, you know, she might, she might think it's funny. I don't know. I'm going to give it to the mom and see what she thinks before we give it to a child um but it is but it does look very funny do i have problems with hp lovecraft because he was a racist xenophobic asshole yes did this also seem like too good a joke to pass up also yes all right i have two more books to go through we're almost done um the first one is unconquerable son by kate elliott this is what if Alexander the Great was a woman and also it took place in space. 
I love Kate Elliott, so that is enough of a pitch for me. I don't know if this is gay. I kind of think it is, but I don't actually know. Um, but Kate Elliott also writes really good, um, like, het couples. So if it's not gay, not the end of the world. But I do kind of hope it's gay. Can anyone le let me know? If you know if this is gay or not, please let me know. Okay, so the last book that I picked up um, recently is... The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Hay. Joanne? Joan. Joan Hay. I started another book by her that was like the... I cannot remember the title even remotely. It didn't really do it for me, but it was also fantasy, and this is more futuristic sci-fi. Um, and people have just been kind of raving about this one. So it's about two sisters that wake up um, that are like separated from each other and they have amnesia and like the only thing that they know is that they have a sister and that they have to find her and people have just been raving about it so I was really interested in this one. I thought that this was like magical realism or fantasy but it turns out that it's actually more like a sci-fi kind of dystopia type um, book story words are hard but regardless I think that I will really like this one. So yeah, that was it for my basically all of the books that I bought in like the first half of the year. Um, which considering that it is all of the books that I bought in the entire first half of the year, it's not too bad. There were really only two times that I kind of went crazy. Really, there was one time I went crazy, which was Powell's, and then there were a few others that I collected here and there. But anyway, if you have read any of the books that I have mentioned, um, please let me know what you thought of them if I should be like moving some up or down my list. Um, but also just let me know what you've been reading lately. Tell me, tell me what's up. I have not been great about uh, uploading on this channel for a while now, but I do still miss it. And I love hearing from you guys. So please let me know. And I will see y'all very soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.